Hello everyone, welcome to this video where I'm going to be talking about the Oric Basin Shiny Bobble Farm. There is a lot to cover in this video, so I'll try to keep it short and sweet for all the events and information. Timestamps will be included below and in the video description, so if you want to just skip to whatever part you want to hear, just go ahead. So just a quick disclaimer, this is just my way to farm Oric Basin. There are many other ways to farm Oric Basin, um, but for specifically Shiny Baubles, I'm sure that whatever farm that you do with somebody, it's going to be something similar to this. Moving on to the expected loot, y'all already know what I'm going to say. First, Shiny Baubles. But the other great thing about Oric Basin is that you actually get a crap ton of unidentified gear of all rarity along with lots of currency, aurelium, and other loots. Moving on to the requirements, basic mounts, only because it's just to catch up with the squad as some of the events are pretty fast paced. If you have a springer with the third mastery to get the really high jump, that could be really useful as well. The other requirement is to have the New Hawk Wallows Mastery. This will allow you to traverse the jungle really really quick. This is where it can get really wonky. So this is going to be my plan. This plan may change depending on what commander you decide to run with. So I first like to start off with my first priority being the pylon events starting with South, Southeast, and Southwest pylon. Then I like to move on to East pylon for Vine Tooth Prime. And before I say anything, I know Vine Tooth Prime isn't the best if you're looking for like shiny baubles because the pylons event themselves run really slowly. But every time I run this train, there's always somebody that needs this achievement either for legendaries or just the mastery. So I like to try and incorporate it every time I do this train. My second priority for this train is the veteran Vine Tooth Primes that spawn. They spawn at every cardinal point and they have a very low cooldown of about nine and a half minutes. What's great about these events is that these are independent to the pylon events and the metas, so these will occur no matter what. You finish one and come back to it nine and a half minutes later, during the meta, before the meta, whatever, and it will be there. The third priority is where things get slightly complicated. After particular pylon events, there are events that can occur after the pylon has been completed. The South Pylon has a very complicated way of how the events occur after you complete the Pylon. So in the footage that you see, this is the footage of the squad doing the three Blighted Sapling events. This will happen while you try to capture the Pylon event. After you do complete the whole Pylon cycle, there will be a champion that spawns about one minute after at the Pylon and you don't want to do that event. You actually want to fail that event. I hate to encourage failing an event because you know that kind of goes against the Go Wars 2 philosophy of things, but you want to fail it to spawn the three events that I was talking about earlier. The champion itself will fail in about five minutes after it spawns. It basically traverses through the jungle to the three blighted sapling locations and once it gets to all three of them, he will disappear, fail, and then will spawn the three Blighted Sapling events. Now, while I am encouraging failing an event, this is open world. So if a pug does end up doing the event, um, just move on, do a different event, continue doing a pylon event or something. The champion itself will come back, but in double force. So it's probably bound to fail again. You just have to pay attention to the map see how things go and then just continue to train as usual. The other post pylon events include Legendary Wyvern after completing the Southeast pylon, two Champion Stoneheads at Southwest pylon, Champion Gold Ooze at West pylon, Champion Gold Guzzler after completing all of West pylon, and the Champion Tendril after completing all of North pylons. For my trains, my priorities are the three South Blighted Sapling events, the Legendary Wyvern, the Gold Ooze if it is up, and the Tendril if it is up. The fourth priority of events are these independent events called the Priory Escorts and the Treasure Mushroom. The Priory Escorts spawn one at the kind of Southwest Quadrant, and then there are two at the East, one Northeast, and one Southeast of the East Watch Pylon. The Treasure Mushroom is located in the southeastern quadrant of the map, right next to the southernmost East Watch Pylon. Now, when it comes to the pre-meta and meta events, 
I will try to do as many events as possible before the meta, but we'll have time to split the group before the meta. So once the pre-meta timer begins, which is 15 minutes before the meta actually starts, at around the 49 minute mark, there's going to be four pre-meta events that are going to start at each cardinal gate. I like to start on the north side because if by chance the west pylon events were completed, then it will spawn this champion arrowhead every 1 minute and 30 seconds, so it's just nice to have an extra champion back. Usually by this time, there's usually other squads that start filling up the map and claim a spot. If there is a tag at north, just double tag with them temporarily, just for the pre-event. You can also expect not to get all four events because they're all going to be doing it. After the pre-event, my rule of thumb is if the map is already organizing before I even organize it myself, then I do events until the 5 minute mark. If the map is not being organized yet, then around maybe like the 7 minute mark, I'll start organizing. Really quick, I do want to feature a tool that I use on my website to make this train go by faster. You would just go from the main page, pewresearchcenter.com, timers, and then org basin. And you're going to be led to this page. This page is what helps all of my Orc Basin trains run really, really smooth. It's essentially a countdown for every event that I would like to keep track of. So Veteran Vine Tooths, Wyvern, Blight Sapling, etc, etc. So right now you see my cursor on the right side. This box right here is all the checkbox that will appear and disappear all the boxes on the left side, which are just the list of timers. The list of timers are also on the middle page where it shows all the locations relative to the map. So how this page works is really simple. For Orc Basin specifically, on the right side, I just click the completed pylon south pylon checkbox, which basically just means that, hey, we completed the south pylon, cool, check it off, and it's gonna start that south pylon event, which is the blighted sapling. So the timer is accounting for the, that one champion failing. So the timer right now of that failing is averaging about 6 minutes and 30 seconds. Now for the buttons, the start button obviously starts the timer. Reset resets the timer and stops the timer so it reverts back to its original form. The button that looks like a cooldown, like little swirly arrow, that is essentially the reset button but it automatically starts the timer again. Now for the org basin map specifically, what's unique to this timer page compared to others is that the post pylon events have a different initial spawn time and a different respawn time. So the initial spawn time for the blighted saplings is 6 minutes and 30 seconds. That's when the champion will fail and those three blighted sapling events will spawn assuming nobody does it. Now, after you completed the first repeatable blighted sapling events, now it's going to respawn in 8 minutes and 30 seconds instead of 6 minutes and 30 seconds. For the wyvern, it's the same thing. Initial spawn time is 14 minutes. After you kill it the first time after completing the pylon event, instead of a 14 minute timer, it becomes 11. I should also point out that the left column does sort, so if you can just rewind just a few seconds back, the Blighted Sapling event is now higher than the Balthazar HP event. Okay, so now we're going to do a gameplay footage of one of my trial runs to show the whole thing, speed up some parts so it's not like an hour and 40 minutes long, and then explain a couple things here and there. So we're starting off with the first South Pylon event. There's going to be four Breachers and a lot of other enemies around. You have to kill the tethered enemies in order to kill the breachers so I just kind of like to do a clockwise rotation there will be a champion or two possibly they're fake don't even worry about them but you might have to kill them if they're tethered second event of south pylon take the portal that will spawn in the middle once you go into this tunnel you're gonna be faced with the champion try not to stand melee range unless you can avoid the AoEs otherwise you're gonna get one-shotted this event, there's going to be two locations that you are going to have to take over and defend. 
in total there are going to be four but you're going to start off with two once you complete the two then you'll have to assault and uh, defend the other two you can actually give quickness to the npc to actually make this go faster otherwise just kill the thing in the middle that looks like a mordrum flower blossom evil laser beam thing if a champion spawns they're real three caches will spawn after that event but this is the part where I kind of drift off from the pylon events. There's a little break and there happens to be a vine tooth that is up next to us. And so while we wait for the next events to spawn, I like to tell everybody to just poke these veteran vine tooths for an extra event credit. Now we went back to the camp and we're talking to the Sage Mansir and that's going to start the southernmost pylon event. This escort's either hit or miss. Um, if you have enough people in your squad, you could get champion bone breakers. And while champions are nice, the bone breakers are super incredibly tanky. So if you get champions, you should bring your raid DPS. Otherwise, you guys will be there for like five minutes of so just killing one champion. At the end of the escort, the NPC will do a channel and there's going to be mobs that will come from either side and there could be one or two champions that will spawn. Now for the next event, this is what we talked about earlier where there's going to be three blighted saplings that we have to kill. But first you want to kill the husk and then you want to run into the sapling. That's what makes it vulnerable. Now that she killed the three, it, there's an escort that starts immediately. Try to stay close to the NPC because there's only one chance for it to spawn champions right before it gets to the actual pylon. Once the NPC gets to the pylon, this is the last event of the south pylon chain. There's always going to be a champion or two and they die pretty quick so make sure you kind of just spread out and make sure you tag them all. So now that we finished this pylon, now you have to make sure to keep track of the blighted sapling events that will spawn. So you have to make sure that champion that will spawn one minute after will fail. Now is also the time to move on to the southeast pylon event chain. What you just saw right now is as we were going here, we actually made it perfect timing for the next cooldown of the veteran vine tooth. So it just respawned. So we made sure the group poked it again to get an extra event. Now you're about to see me open my map and this is because I'm checking for that event. As you can see, that champion that we want to fail has spawned and is moving. Unfortunately, this escort, there's not much that's going on. We have to defend the NPC as it's being destroyed by pocket raptors and a wyvern that's throwing out fire. But you can hon honestly just be AFK here and <laughs> it will just progress by itself. If we really wanted to, we could probably go to another outpost or take the wall of north to find another veteran vine tooth and then come back but it's whatever the next event though is really nice because there's a lot of rubble that's placed all over the place and every time you interact with one and you do damage it has a chance to spawn a champion rolling devil and there's a lot of them too so you can get like maybe five six seven champion rolling devils in one event next event you're just going to escort the npc to this area and you're going to ask the squad to grab a pile of meat and turn it in up on the ledge in the middle the gathering event itself is actually really fast so you can complete it in about like 20 seconds now for the legendary wyvern all you gotta know don't stand in front cc bar shows up you cc that and then do max raid dps on it Okay, you don't really need max DPS, but I know I wasn't top on the DPS meter, but y'all should play Power Renegade in open world, just saying. Anyways, four chests will spawn after you complete this pylon, and now you can start tracking the wyvern when it spawns again. At this point, it was perfect timing for the veteran vine tooth to pop up again, so because we're next to it, we just made sure to poke it again. Normally, we would go to the three blighted sapling events but somebody actually in this train did it already so we just went on to the southwest pylon for now as you can see in the mini map you'll see a new boss looking symbol it's kind of big and red and scary that is the second event that happens when you kill the first champion now two champions will spawn and you want that one to fail out of all the footage that i have of org basin I actually did not have one that had the first event of the southwest pylon. It's just a simple escort, has multiple waves and can spawn champions. Now in the footage right now, you'll see me be on this hill 
If we were here before the event started, there would have been a champion. But at this point, all we gotta do for this event is bring supply to an NPC that's down, escort them, it will finish really fast. Now this is just a simple terragraph. There's nothing special. Don't stand right on the hitbox, otherwise you're probably gonna die from his AoE that you probably can't see with all the people here. Now there's a buffer to the next event, so what I like to do is go south, go to the Balthazar HP, and then poke this champion. This champion does count in his event and will give you shiny baubles and loot and all that good stuff. Just make sure to do very small poke. It's extremely squishy. Now it's time for the two stone head events. Just be prepared to die because you're probably going to go down and probably have to squat. So what you want to do is you want to prep a lot of CC, get those way stations, EMP down, prep the squad, make sure you CC, um, get some break stun stability because these guys are mean champions. When they both reach 50%, they become invulnerable and will spawn little rolling devils and they could possibly spawn champions and they do give loot. After you complete the southwest pylon, it will spawn 4 caches. Now earlier, we couldn't get those 3 blighted sapling events because somebody did that one champion event that we wanted to fail. But now, since the second one did fail, by the time we finish this event, it's actually up. So that's where we're gonna head to now. And this event is exactly the same way as how we did it when we did the South Pylon event. You kill the husk, you kill the sapling. Rinse and repeat. You can probably guess what's up now. The South Veteran Vine Tooth is up once again. So we did the small poke, moved on. Along with the Vine Tooth, the Wyvern's also up. Just saying, you guys should totally use my timer page if you want to command this train and make it smooth. I promise you, it will make everything just super smooth and make sense. From the wyvern, we went north. We planned to do the treasure mushroom, but in this video, it actually did not show up. Normally it would because there's not many people that would be doing it in times of when people would normally do pylon events and not during the meta. So we just went to a nearby Priory Escort event and we will be going to the East Watch pylon right after. The first event, you have to kill the vine tenders that are on the cliffs. There are three locations and if you do not kill them, they will regenerate the breacher's health immediately. Second East Watch pylon event, you want to CC the mobs in order to kill them. Watch out because they actually do explode on death and it's not very obvious and you're just gonna see half your squad die immediately and then question why they why they died. <laughs> After that event, I like to kind of just freestyle a little bit. I tell my squad, let's go south, let's go poke the events really quick and then head right back and be just in time for Vine Tooth Prime. Because while my goal is to get Vine Tooth Prime for people to get the achievements, I do want to also let people have fun and make money at the same time. We actually spent a lot of time in the East Pylon because they take a while, which is good because now all the events that are repeatable at the South events, they're all back. So we just killed the veteran Vine Tooth, we're here at the Wyvern again, and then, then we're about to go get the three blighted sapling events again. In this particular instance, we actually had time to even poke the Balthazar champ. When we waypointed back to East Watch waypoint, we actually got lucky and there was a veteran vine tooth sitting below the waypoint so we poked that really quick head right back up for the vine tooth prime though luckily we were still in the pre-events to it so just a little disclaimer what i did for going to south watch is a little risky because if you do end up in a situation where people are doing the east watch and they didn't really follow you just you want to pay attention to the map make sure that you know where the events are progressing and how they're progressing because you don't want to miss vine tooth prime for the people that are following you so in this case i knew that since the map was closing and people in the squad are following me i just went ahead and did all those south pylon events and came back here for vine tooth prime if you want to make this really quick you want to prep the squad with cc get everybody to emp tell everybody to get all the cc they can because when you CC this guy, his damage intake increases exponentially and he dies incredibly fast. In the video clip right now, you'll see that our party did successfully CC him and you can just watch his bar melt. But if you don't CC him, you're gonna end up fighting him for like more than five minutes probably, especially if you get into a squad of people that don't have high DPS. It's, it might be a little bit of a miserable experience. 
So now that Vinetooth Prime is done, I like to freestyle and just try to find as many events as possible to do for the squad to get as many baubles and unidentified gear as possible. So I'm keeping track of the Southwatch pylons, I'm keeping track of whatever vine tooth that we killed, I'm keeping track of whatever priory escorts that we took. In this instance, I did not do West Watch at all, but in the next clips, I'll be going over what West Watch pylon events I would have done if they were up. So here's a cute little event where there's a script that's looking for treasure, and this escort is actually really nice. While in the beginning, yes, the NPC talks a lot and it takes a little bit, but once the NPC gets going, there's lots of waves of enemies where a lot of it will become champions. Champion Cave Screamer, Champion Ooze, Champion Tiny Ooze. It's kind of adorable. After finishing the escorts, a large ooze will appear. You want to DPS it before the little ooze gets to the big ooze because if that happens, then the ooze will heal and it's basically restarting the fight. If there's time, this is also a good point to keep track of the gold ooze champion from when it respawns because it does have a relatively low cooldown and it is just a really easy event to get another event in. Now at this point everything kind of repeats itself right? We're kind of waiting until the meta begins and so we're just we're going killing all the veteran vine tooth again, we're killing all of the three sapling events, the wyvern, the ooze if it's up, any priory escorts, treasure mushrooms, just whatever is up until the 15 minutes prior to the meta. That's when the pre-events will begin. Skipping all the way to the pre-meta phase, I'm going to reiterate and say that I'm staying on the north side because if by chance the west side pylons were completed, then we could have gotten a, a champion arrowhead to appear every 1 minute and 30 seconds. These pre-events are really nice because there's multiple waves of enemies with a good chance to spawning champions in each wave. After the pre-events, either we get one or two. Once they're all finished, I like to run around and get any veteran bind tooth primes or escorts or treasure mushroom to get, you know, just a few more events and shiny baubles. It's a good note to point out that all the post pylon events are over so there's no way we could back go back to the three flighted sapling events or the wyvern etc i said this before but in terms of splitting the people and the squad if the map is already organized then i split up the people in about five minutes before the meta if i need to do more work then i give myself seven minutes or more before the meta begins but like a really short version of how to do this meta there is four gates, north, south, east, west. You want to split up at least maybe 15 people on each side except for east. Each side has their own mechanic, north being you grab like this little gun at the start and you either have two options, either one to get rid of this vine wall on the octavine or to um, deploy a turret. But there is a trick, you can actually deploy a turret in the vine right on top of the octavine and it will do damage it kind of have to get the sweet spot but it will it will work at west this footage that you see right now is me at west what we did was we went in there and we went into these like dancing mushroom piles and in this circle of dancing mushrooms you turn into a mushroom yourself you go to the side, run to the run to the octavine, and then use your number one skill to get rid of the octavine's defenses. And you want to do 15. If you're at south, it's the most difficult. All you gotta know is you should bring a class that either has a lot of good CCs such as pulls and pushes because you're basically taking a bomb from one end to the other, and you want to have great CCs in order to push all of that. And if you're at East, you don't need that many people because it's the easiest mechanic where all you need is updrafts. You grab a bomb, take the updrafts, and then drop the bomb mid-air right into the octavine. With all those mechanics, the main goal for everybody is to first, once you kill your gate and you get into your lane, you want to kill the breachers and the frogs almost immediately. They will be a nuisance if you do not kill them. Every lane will also have these shiny enchanted armors in front of the gate. You want to have 
at least some people grab some because they will be useful for moving the trigger blossoms that will explode they will be good for stunning mobs such as the stone heads the bone breakers the frogs they're also good for resin people immediately if they're down or dead and for every lane you want to kill all the octavines within two minutes of each other if you do not kill them within two minutes and you kill one too early all of them will regenerate some health all right now that we got all the gameplay down and you know exactly what i do for orc basin checking out the loot at the moment orc basin is sitting, sitting around 22 gold per hour but this could change depending on the market what we have is we got a lot of beryllium, lots of keys. The volatile magic I got is from my gathering tools from the glyph, T5 and T6 mats. Lots of unidentified gear, but this is also assuming I did not open any of the champion bags or the recovered priory expedition chest, which gives you a lot of unidentified gear. I average about 32 shiny baubles, some being 39, some being 27 depending on how well and how much progress i got if you want the full spreadsheet i'll put the link in the description below if you want to just check out all my trials and see exactly what i got and that's the end of this video i know it was super long but i hope it was super informative i tried to tell you exactly what i do and hopefully if you're a commander that you feel inspired and you want to try this train out because it is super fun the pugs love it i love it it's great Overall, this farm makes this Choya one happy Choya because one, it's I mean it's fun, it's lots of loot, shiny baubles, like it, you can't go wrong. Warwick Basin, it's it's great. It's a gold mine full of shinies. So thank you for watching this video, especially if you made it all the way this far. Props to you. I talked a lot, so I'm so sorry. But if you want to support me, you know, totally hit that subscribe button, give this a like if you thought it was really informative. Check out my website. Thank you so much.